KGED students, I've got another tricky word problem, and once again, I just want to let you know, I'm going to solve this sucker two ways. First, I'm going to do it the way most math teachers will teach you, algebraically, because that really is a skill you need for college. But uh, after that, we're going to do it with a little cheat method um, of... Uh, that will be able to get you through the GED so that if you panic and forget all the algebra you ever learned, you still have a shot of doing this problem, okay? Uh, so um, let's go ahead and take a look at it the standard algebraic way first. Kareem had a total of $20,000 that he invested last year. He invested a portion of it in an account that paid 8% simple interest per year. Dear goodness, Kareem, where are you finding these accounts? I can't even find an account that pays 1% interest per year. <laughs> Cream must bank at a better bank than I do. Uh, and the remaining amount in an account that paid 7% annual interest. After one year, he received um, $1,540 in interest payments. How much did Kareem invest in each account? Okay. So once again, take a look here. This is very similar to the last two problems we've looked at because you can see this. We are looking for two things. How much, much did Kareem invest in each account. Dude had two accounts. He had a first account and a second account. We have two unknowns. Okay. Every time you don't know something in algebra, you use a variable, a letter. So that means we're going to need two variables. And like we said before, if you have two variables and you want to solve it, you need two equations. Let's give it a try. So first, let's start by defining our two variables using those two unknowns. What are the two things we don't know, the two things we'll, that we're looking for? Well, that question says, how much did Kareem invest in each account? The things that we don't know are how much he invested in the first account and how much he invested in the second account. Let's use some variables to stand for that. I'm going to use F for the amount he invested in the first account. And let's use S for the amount he have invested in the second account. Now, it doesn't matter what letters you pick. I mean, you could pick X and Y, but I'm so flaky, I'll forget what I was finding at the end. So I like a letter that gives me a hint as to what I was doing. Okay. Now, like I said, two unknowns, that means I need two equations. So we got to go find two relationships in this word problem, okay? And they, they'll always give you two because if they didn't, you wouldn't have enough information to figure it out. So let's look at the first one. Here's the first thing. Kareem had a total of $20,000 that he invested last year. You might say, well, okay, that's not really a relationship. Yes, it is because I can find the total two ways. I can just write down what it is. So like the total he invested, let me write it in English first because this one... Okay, there's two ways to talk about the total he invested. I can just state what it is. Well, they told us what it is. It's $20,000. Or I can tell you, you know, he invested some in the first account, the money in his first account, and he invested some in the second account. If I add together the first account and the second account, it should total $20,000. And once again, go Kareem. Um, I wish I had $20,000 to invest. Kareem's doing well. Okay, so... Uh, first account plus second account equals $20,000. Okay, so that's my first equation, but two variables, I need two equations. We gotta go find another one. And these trick students a lot with the percents, okay? So let's take a look at the next relationship. Let me get a different color so we can really hone in on it. So next thing I see is that um, he invested a portion of it into an account that paid 8% simple interest per year. So let's see, his first account is the 8%, and the remaining amount in an account that paid 7% annual interest. So his second account is at 7%. Okay, and then after one year, he received 1,540 in interest. So once again, this time, instead of talking about the total he invested, let's talk about his total interest. Again, there's two ways. They just told us how much total he got in interest. He got $1,540. That's one way to talk about his total interest. But the other way is to find it mathematically. What would you do to compute interest? Well, you would take 8% of the first account. So 8%. So remember, 8% of the first account mathematically. You don't use percents 
uh, to do math with, you usually either use a decimal uh, equivalent or a fraction. I'm going to use a decimal. So percent means divided by 100. So 8 divided by 100 is 0 0.08. Of means multiply, so I'm going to multiply that by the first account. Well, you said you said you were going to use a letter for the first account. Do it. 8% of the first account is 0.08F, so let me write that. 0.08F. That'll be his finance charges from the first account. But that's not his only, uh, or I should say interest rates. But that's not the only interest he's getting. He's getting some more. So and plus dude is getting 7% interest, so 0 0.07, 7 divided by 100, of the second times S, times the second. Boom. So that's what I needed, y'all. Two unknowns means I need two variables, which means I need two equations. I now have whew, what's called a system of equations. Okay, that being said, there are multiple ways to solve a system of equations. I keep saying it over and over again. I hope when you take your test, you'll have my voice in your head. Okay, there's graphing. In your college class, you might have a graphing calculator, so you could do it with graphing. On GED, though, we don't have a graphing calculator, so what other ways are there? There's substitution. Swapping out an expression for an equivalent expression. Or there is elimination. My favorite way is generally elimination. If I don't have a letter alone, I'm using elimination. So I'm going to use, uh, yeah, I think I will use, sorry, I was looking at it because, you know, you always have an option. You can use whatever way you want, okay? So don't get tied up in the way Kate would do. But I think I would use elimination even here, okay? So in elimination, your goal is to get one of the letters to go away. F or S in this case. And the way you do it is by using opposites. Like, for example, you know, negative 5F and positive 5F are opposites. So if I were to put those two things together, they would cancel out. They would zero out. That's what you're trying to make happen. But right now, if you look at it like this number of Fs and this number of Fs are not opposites, this number of S's and this number of F's are not opposites. We're going to have to do some work to these equations to force opposites to happen so that we can get this wonderful cancellation property. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this entire equation on the top here, and I'm going to multiply by negative 0 0.08. First of all, let's talk about why I did it. Why am I doing that? Well, the opposite of positive 0 0.08 is negative 0 0.08. If I do that, my two Fs will be opposite, so that'll be good. And then you then let's talk about how I can do that. How is that legal? People say, Kate, can you just really do that? Multiply whatever you want by whatever you want. And yeah, the answer is yes, as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to multiply this side by 0 0.08 too. Now, let's see after making this change what our new equivalent equation will be. I'm going to write it in orange underneath here. Okay. So negative 0 0.08 times F will just be negative 0 0.08 F. Negative 0 0.08 times s will be negative 0 0.08s. And then I don't know that one. Oh, maybe I do. 8 times 2 is 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, but take off 1, 2. And negative. Woo! I better check in my calculator. It's been a long day. 20,000 times negative 0 0.08. Hey, good job, Kate. Negative 1,600. Wonderful. So now you might be saying, well, why did she bother to do that? Uh, I did that so that I could now add the two equations. Add them? Yes, absolutely. If I add equal things, I'll still have equal things. And so I'm going to do that and it is going to make one of the letters go away. Watch it. Positive 0. Point, or positive 0 0.08F and negative 0.08F are opposites. They will cancel out. Now, I have 0.07s minus 0.08s. Let's do it. And you might be saying, Kate, you just said you were adding. Why are you now saying minus? Because it's a negative number. I know that adding a negative is the same as subtracting, you guys. So in my calculator, I just type 0.07 minus 0.08. And that's actually a really easy one to do, but let's focus on the hard stuff. And I get negative 0 0.01. And of course, I'm adding and subtracting S's, so I still have S's. And I'm going to do the same thing with these numbers, 1540 minus 1600. 
and I get negative 60. And I'm almost done, but S is not alone yet. I need to get rid of that negative 0 0.01. Now, careful, don't add it. That thing is not actually subtracting. That thing's all shoved up against S, so it's multiplying. The opposite of multiply is divide. Let's divide by negative 0 0.01. Now, we can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides. So negative 60 divided by negative 0 0.01 is 6,000. So I find in his second account, he invested $6,000. Wonderful. So that's why I use the S, so I would know. That's the second account. Okay. So if you say, well, if he invested $6,000 in the second account, Kate, how about the first account? Well, go back to one of the relationships. I'm going to go back to the easy one to think about. The first one that he had a total of $20,000 to invest. Guys, if F plus S, his two accounts total... $20,000, and I know what S is, S is actually $6,000, it's easy enough to see that F must be $14,000. Some of you won't even need to do the algebra to see it, but if you don't see it, you can just plug in what you know about S and use it to solve for F. So subtracting 6,000 from both sides, I get F is equal to 14,000. And of course that makes sense, $14,000 in the first account, then 6,000 in the second account, or vice versa. Okay, wonderful. So if I'm answering this, you know, first account, $14,000. Second account, $6,000. Now a lot of you guys are mad at me right now. You're like, Kate, that was unnecessarily ridiculously hard. I hate freaking writing in the language of algebra. You're just as bad as every other teacher I ever met. And here's what I have to say. This really, 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 really is the easier way once you learn the language of algebra. I know it's tricky to get used to. Eventually, you need to do it for your college goals. You guys have them, okay? But that being said, when you get to the test and you start panicking and you start freaking out, you're like, is there another way? You just took 12 minutes to do that. I don't have 12 minutes on my GED, Kate. Okay, fair enough. Let's check out the cheat method. Okay, so here we go. Uh, it's not really cheating, honestly, but we're going to just use a guess and check method. In a guess and check method, you don't have unknowns. You're just trying some of these numbers and seeing if they work. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's just try A and see if it works and fits in with what they said in the word problem. So let's try this first. Okay, so first of all, the first relationship I see is Kareem had a total of $20,000. Now, um, we need to make sure that in any of these scenarios, it totals $20,000. So let's do it. Let's look at the first scenario. In A, they say $6,000 in the first account and $14,000 in the second account. If I total those by adding, I do get $20,000. That one checks. So does the next one. $16,000 plus $4,000 also totals to $20,000. And we see the same thing on the next one. $14,000 plus $6,000 totals to $20,000. And again, 12,000 plus 8,000 totals to 20,000. All of them are actually checking with the first relationship. Darn it, we didn't even get to narrow things down. But that's okay, we still have a second relationship. So let's look at the next one. Uh, next run relationship is that it says when he pays 8% simple interest um, on that first account and 7% interest on the second account, it ends up being a total of 1,540 in interest. So let's just check that out. If I pay 8% interest on the first account and 7% interest on the second account, does that give me a total of $1,540? I don't know, let's check it out. 8% of 6,000 would be, uh, let's see, eight divided by 100, so 0 0.08 times 6,000 plus 7% uh, of 1,400 would be 7 divided by 100, so 0 0.07 times 1,400. Oh, 14,000, sorry. Okay, and let me multiply that out. 0 0.08 times 6,000 plus 0 0.07 times 14,000. And I get $1,460. Close, but mm -mm, not the 1540 I was looking for. Let's try the next one. 8% of the first account plus 7%, 7% of the second account. 
Okay, and check that my calculator, 0 0.08 times 16,000 plus 0 0.07 times 4,000. And 1560, oh, so close, but not 1540. Let's rule that guy out. Okay, 8% of the $1,400 in the first account plus 7% of the $6,000 in the second account. And that one gives me... And I keep trying to forget zeros. I keep saying 1400 instead of 14000 I'm really struggling today. And I get $1,540. And I guessed and checked my way to success, even if I forgot all the algebra I ever learned in my panic while taking the GED. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.